Welcome back to Renegade Muscle. I'm Jeff Roberts, and I'm here with Lee Priest, as always. Uh, we got more listener questions today, and oh, uh, we'll talk about, talk about the New York Pro. Uh, Lee has some things on his mind, and uh, that's about it. I like the flat top, Lee. You're yeah, looking you very handsome. I'm not, I'm not sure. I look at it some days, and I think, yeah, then some days, no. It all depends what I eat, because some days... If I eat a lot of crap food, when, next morning I wake up and my face is rounder, and I'm like, uh, doesn't look good. But then I'll right. go a few days hard on cardio and eat clean, and my jaw comes back in. I'm like, now it looks good. A flat top, you got to have the whole jaw and everything. You can't have uh, a square haircut and then a fucking round face. <laughs> right. Like it looks like one. If you've got a round face and a flat top, you look like one of those fucking dustbins that the fucking lid opens up on. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think uh... – I think it looks sick. I like um, it. It's amazing. A Chinese guy cuts it. Really? Which, make, which makes sense because his eyes are flat like that, so he gets a good fucking level level cut. Yeah. Thank I think you. it looks awesome. It's throwback. It's like it's vintage Lee Priest. It's one of your most most like iconic haircuts, the flat top. Yeah. I had it twice. It was 98 when I had it at the Olympia, and then I had it – oh, well, Early 2000s at some time, I saw a video online. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't really had it since then. Yeah, 98 you had it. 98, yeah, then around 2000 or something, I had it again. Your so, legs in 98 were fucking enormous. I remember that. Enormous. Ah. So, to get credit. Credit for my legs. No. Um, New York Pro. Yes. What would you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I thought, I thought, uh, I thought, cons- I don't know, considering like the COVID and all the, the fake pandemic bullshit, uh-huh. I thought like the top six at least were like all, all close, like close yeah. to, in- t- close to a hundred percent. Like none of them looked blatantly off. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, like, okay. Ian one, have we seen Ian look better? Yes. Did Rodriguez look good? Yes. Did Max Charles look good? Yes. But, you know, I, I did see a lot of people giving Ian shit. And I've said it before, too. When I used to place ahead of guys, people would get mad at me. It's like, why get mad at me or why get mad at Ian? Get mad at the judges. They're the ones doing the fucking judging. They're the ones yeah. with the places. It's not like Ian said, hey, I'm going to put myself first and fuck all of you. It's like, that's what the judges saw on the day. And generally, the only one that's happy is the winner. But Hey, you know, we've seen him better. We've seen other people better and worse. But the way it came out on the day, he's the winner. It's history now. Move on to the fucking next show. Yes, maybe. Because I was looking at pictures too. And yeah, okay, Ian looked great in some shots. But then another shot, the other person might look good. And that one, but, you yeah. know, like I said, different cameras. You're going to have different lighting, different standing. Or say Ian's doing a lat spread and he hits it really hard. And now he's just coming out of it. Then whoever, Rodriguez or Max Charles, is just hitting it. Yeah. People go, oh, look at Ian, soft, and he's hard. Well, you know, I said, if you're doing the pose, because I've had pictures of me before where people say, Lee, your legs are soft in that picture. Yeah, because I've just flexed it. Now I've just relaxed it, but the person beside me has just hit it. They're like, mm-hmm. look at his leg compared to yours. It's like, you know, you've got to be, you know, if everyone's flexing hard at the same time, but that's very rarely happens because people are going to go into a pose and then they're going to come out of it while the other one's just going into it. And then the other one goes, click, and they go, oh, look at that. It's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's just. Yeah. There's so many variables when you're looking at photos and videos. If you're not there, it's so hard to. Yeah, photos are tough. I watched it and I thought, I honestly thought it could have went, I th- I thought it could have went one of like five to five different guys and no one really mm-hmm. would have been that upset because the call outs yeah. were really unusual. And I thought, I thought, I don't know, I thought it was if Max won, nobody would have been upset. I don't think if, if Justin won, nobody would have been upset. I don't even mm-hmm. think if, Ma- if, like, I even think Patrick Moore had a case. Like, Patrick Moore looked pretty – he's, like, a little bit smaller, but he looked pretty fucking good up there next to those guys, too. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think – I thought it was really – it was tight. I don't think – Yeah. What else Ian doesn't that? have, like, a – I don't know. He doesn't have anything that, like, pops out at you necessarily. No, he's got a pleasing physique and his conditioning is yeah. good. Yes, we've seen him in better conditioning, but that can be said about everybody. We've seen other people in better condition or worse condition and – Stuff like that. But, you know, you can only judge on what's there on the day. And the judges saw it was his day. And that's it. You know, there's other shows to come. There's a fucking 
Olympia coming up. So if you feel like you were robbed, go in and see if you can earn back what you think you lost. So, you know, right. Olympia Olympia's a bigger pay show. So if you place higher, you're going to get more money. But, you know, people are going to go on. And then I know that I saw, I didn't actually read any of it, but I saw, could have been on Ford show, Foud. How do you pronounce his name? Foud? Ford? Fuad. Fuad. Thank you. Fuad. Yep. So you know, on his show, yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw on his show with Ian on there, and they were saying about how that thing was going on with Milos. And, you know, you don't, I don't know why Milos – okay, Milos has invested, you know, in his client, you know, if he's training someone. But still, there's no need to fucking take it out on Ian. As I said, it's not Ian's fault. Ian's not the one that said, fucking, Max, you're going to get placed there. I'll make sure you get in that position. Yeah, it's not Ian's fault. So I had this fucking, yeah. you know – bitchiness going back and forth between competitors we've all been there we've all had good days and bad days so it's like you know you know yeah Ian what Ian won on the day so congratulations to him and if all the other people are upset then next time it, if you qualify for olympia or whatever you're doing come in better and bigger <laughs> yeah milo said some ridiculous shit i feel like i mean yeah i didn't I like milo's is a, I, didn't. I think he's the man like he's and i think he's a very underrated coach like people make fun mm-hmm. of him for the insulin thing Listen, whatever your opinion is on, on insulin, all I'm saying is when Milos works with guys, they almost always, like, not that many guys work with him, like, at the pro level, it doesn't seem like, mm-hmm. at the top level. But when they do, remember Dennis Wolf, Johnny Jackson, Hida Tata, like, now Max, like, he he's, everyone, he, they nail it, but he said that, like, he, it, one in one of the MD interviews, he was like, John De La Rosa, who was third, uh-huh. in the 90s, would be 10 weeks out condition how he was on stage and it's like uh-huh. dude what 10 weeks out that's like what not are you ten, talking not he, ten, had, he, he had shredded glutes the nobody in the 90s saw, had see, shredded never, glutes 10 weeks out no i never saw many of pictures of john on stage i saw like backstage and just standing there relaxed and i thought mm, could have been a bit more crisper but i never i must have missed the photos of him on stage but you know you 10 weeks out you're still <laughs> yeah yeah like <laughs> I'm about 10 weeks out now, Jeff. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I thought like, yeah, he wasn't like the, he wasn't the hardest guy in the show by no means, but he wasn't like, he wasn't soft. No. He was a little watery from the front. It looked like, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But the, the pictures I saw just like backstage standing there. I think he did a couple of shots backstage, but yeah, generally backstage, you look good. Some of the lighting guys shows I got backstage and had photos. You looked harder sometimes backstage, but He's got a he's got a very pleasing physique, symmetry wise, and you know nice muscle bellies and stuff. But definitely not ten. <laughs> ten yeah. Tens, tens would be cool. Right. And I think as far as Max and his, I mean, I think I do think Max should have been at least one place higher. But I don't know if I would have him any higher than that. I mean, they they like mm-hmm. like Justin from the rear next to Max mm-hmm. was. But it's like anything too. It's like I could understand this whole argument from Milos a lot clearer if. Ian won, and Max was second. Now, if Max was second to Ian, then you'd be like, oh, fuck, he was ripped off this and that. It could have been this. But what, Ian was first, Max was like, what, fifth or sixth? Uh, Max was so fifth. Fifth. So Ian's yeah. first, Max is fifth. Max has to – Mila should be upset with the guy that was fourth, and then Mila should be upset with the guy that was third, yeah. And then Milos should should be upset with the guy that was second before right. Milos even starts fucking attacking Ian, who won. There's another fucking four guys between Ian and Max. Why right. is fucking Milos Milos going off at them? It's like right. Milos, if, if you're going to attack it's... the winner, there's still other four other guys that placed in between the winner and Max. So fucking yeah. well, three three other guys. So. Why isn't he fucking having a go at them? Why just attack fucking Ian? I can understand you can get a bit more nitpicky if it was Ian and Max was second, then go, oh, come on. You know, but then even then you could say it could go either way because different physiques. But, yeah, if it was second, then you can maybe say, I think he should have won. But people used to say that to me when I won a show. Oh, I should have beat you. I'm like, mate, you got like seventh. There's fucking five other guys (laughs) between you and me. It's like, what, you think you just should have beat me? What about the other yeah. guys in between you and me? What, you, you just fucking, I don't get it. So, yeah, yeah. So that's what I just don't get with Milos. It's like, Milos, if you're going to get mad at Ian, you know, get mad at the other guys first. You should have mentioned all the other fucking guys and come down hard on them 
like yeah. the shit you give an Ian, give the same shit to those other people that were between Max and Ian. Why aren't yeah. you going off at them? <laughs> right. Yeah, it was it was I don't know, it was a little bit weird. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the greatest lineup of all time or anything, but it was I don't know. I thought it was it was competitive at least. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I had no idea who was gonna most. I don't think anyone had any idea who was gonna win. No, I think it's turned out too. It's hard, like I said, with the COVID and different people turning up. But I'm getting to see some of the names more. But I remember Dave put up a list of names from some show once, and I'm like, Jesus. I can yeah. never hardly heard of any of the names. <laughs> Unless it's like the Olympia, then you hear of the Phil Heath's Bonnex and stuff now. But some of these other ones now, I said some of the names, I'm like, huh? who, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. I follow pretty close. And there's some guys now that I'm like, ah, I got to I gotta, I gotta look this guy up. I don't even know who he is. Yeah, there's a lot of that. I imagine Ian looks a lot better in person than he does in video and stuff. Because mm-hmm. he's well, a pale people- white dude. Yeah, that's the thing, too, because you can have some guys, too, where in a photo, in real life, they can look a lot fuller. Not fuller, but they can look a lot more, you know, 3D. And then right. sometimes in photos, it doesn't do them justice. In a photo, they can look flat and 2D, whereas someone like Phil Heath in a photo looks fucking 3D no matter what angle he's on. And in real yeah. life, the same, whereas some guys, you can go, oh, he looks flat, but you see him in person, you're like, oh, shit, he's not that bad after all. So, you know, unless you're there and stuff and going on and – like I said, Milos just needs to calm down because Ian won, Max was fifth. You got those other guys in between second, third, and fourth. Milos, get mad at the guy in fourth, get mad at the guy in third, get mad at the guy in second, and once you fucking bitched about them, then go, oh, like I said, I could understand Milos being upset if it was, like I said, Ian first, Max second, and it was really, really close. Then get nitpicky, but still don't attack Ian personally, like I said. It's not him judging. He's on stage yeah. just like Max. It's the people down there. Start yelling at the judges. Go, what are you looking at? What are you looking yeah. at? Yeah, like, why attack fucking Ian personally? Yeah. Ask him to explain it. That's what I would do. Yeah. Right? Can you it's explain like, to me why? Yeah, because okay, yeah. Yeah, that's my client. I brought my client in looking this way. What did my client not have or what was my client missing that Ian had? Ask the fucking judges. But to attack him personally, he's, he's just up there doing his fucking job competing, coming in the best he can on the day, just like Max did. But like I said, I don't get the whole, when there's that big range between them, there's people in between them. How do you suddenly just start attacking Ian when there's right. people There's people between Max and Ian? Right, yeah. Like, I mean, Max, like, in those front shots, like, he might have my favorite the, my favorite abs of all time. Like, those abs are so, and you have like, to they're, they're, like, made of stone, dude. It's crazy right. what his midsection but looks you gotta, like. you got to think, too, there, there's another point there because – you know, sometimes Ian's tan isn't the best and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes with the bright lights, you haven't got the right tan, you can look a bit washed out. And mm. it doesn't matter. You're always going to see, even if a black guy's a little bit off, if they're really dark skin under the lights, they look great. <laughs> so right. they, they always look good because, you know, that just that deep, dark tan, I mean, their skin color makes everything look a bit more deeper and stuff, makes yeah. things pop more. I said it before, you watch the Olympic Games, watch those fucking marathoners. You get the guy from Kenya, he's fucking like this, he's all sucked in and all the, and they're running along and they've got this smile on their face. You're like, fuck, he looks healthy, doesn't he? Here yeah. comes the fucking American or the English guy, totally same build, fucking all sucked in. You're like, he looks in pain like he's dying of fucking cancer. He's like, fuck, yeah. because he's all pale and white. You're like, rrr, rrr, rrr. the uh-huh. Kenyan's like, hey, hey. <laughs> he looks so healthy. <laughs> it's like, all it is is the skin color, but. You know, the darker skin just makes them, I don't know, look healthier and that makes them just look better. Whereas the right. white guy looks like he's going through stage four before he gets to the fucking finish line. Stage four. <laughs> it's true. It it's is. True. It's like, I don't know. But what, uh, what can you do? There's a really big race where I live and uh, like a really big, like, it's like a. But the Billy, the Billy Cart Derby. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, I don't live in a hillbilly town anymore. <laughs> Uh, you're not, but, you're not, you moved down the Appalachians, did you? <laughs> yes, but they, they, the Kenyans always come and whoop everybody. It's a really big thing. It's like a nationally like respected race. And they always show up in. Uh, oh, in they all do, house. don't they? Oh yeah. I remember, um, even was it the, uh, was it the Boston Marathon and stuff like that? We have people that come here to Australia. And when people come here for the big races, they all come in and, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> clean house. How how do you think Milos would have done in that lineup back in the day? Hmm. It's hard to say. You'd have to see him, wouldn't you? He'd be small, I think, in that lineup. Because Antoine's a fucking beast, and he almost kind of looks small in some shots. Yeah, Milos. And, had like, what was Milos on stage? Because Antoine's two sixty on stage, and he, some of those guys made him look small. Milos had good symmetry. Hold on, does this bring you memories? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nostalgic. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, Let, let's get to the good bit. <laughs> Uh, God, it's making, this is making fucking Jeff homesick. It is. <laughs> Do you remember sitting on the porch with Uncle Pappy playing yeah. this, Jeff? Yeah. Were you squealing like a pig? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a fucking <laughs> with a piece of straw coming out of my mouth. Oh, the oh, memories of man. the good old days at home, yeah. Jeff. Oh, yeah, sorry. Good old days on the plant, on the plantation. Ah, that brought back some memories there, didn't it? Some good uh, ones and and bad ones. Now you got me back home. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Man. Well, some of those Christmas parties you like to remember. Sometimes when Uncle Bob and Sam come around mm-hmm. to give you that secret Santa gift you want to forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You always got to bring it up. <laughs> oh, not secret Santa. <laughs> Oh, I'm not getting that tube uh, steak. I'm not getting that tube steak again. Am I? <laughs> I don't uh, want to unwrap it. Year. I don't want to unwrap it. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you got me that one eye spitting snake again. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> Why is my Christmas always uh, got to be white? <laughs> oh, uh, there. Uh, you know so much about it? my childhood. I know, that was a trip down memory lane, wasn't it? <laughs> sure was. Whew. Man. Mm. I think Scott's anyway. been there too. Scott's at the other end right now having flashbacks himself. <laughs> he's even at he's even at his mum's place. Yeah. Like, mom! Mom! His mum's come out. Is that your father on the banjo? <laughs> 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 he's getting those little oh, fucking goodness. plates off the wall with the little boy and girl on it. <laughs> yeah. Dance there. <laughs> Uh, nothing like them collector plates, Scott. Too bad you can't come on to talk shit. <laughs> Here's a girl with a rabbit. <laughs> ah, people to wonder what we're talking about. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> um, be all right. Oh, my cheek shirt. <laughs> so that growth, mate. So that, so that growth. Your fucking bones are grown. <laughs> no, growth makes me my insulin not work. Can't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you one show not take your insulin so we can see what happens during the show? If you want, can you do like this and just go? <laughs> no, no, I might die on camera if I do that. Do you start sweating first? Do we get like Ooh, indications? That, oh yeah, so we so we'll actually see the stages before you. Nothing actually... makes you <laughs> nothing makes you sweat like that. That's like full court basketball in the middle of the summer on oh, blacktop. I remember. Like I remember this. when I used to when I used to diet. I passed out twice from um, what is it when they call it hyperglycemic, whatever. Yeah, low blood sugar. I'll, yeah, I'd be get that low. I'd be doing like cardio, and I'm like, oh fuck, I feel. I get really nauseous first, and then I get really cold, and then I start sweating. I'm like, oh, I'm at 35 minutes. I got to get the 50 minutes on the bike, so I keep going and keep going. One time, as soon as I stood off the bike, fucking boom on the floor. Yeah. And another time, I went to bed. I was sleeping. I woke up and like fuck, I think I'm going to be sick, like really nauseous. And as I got out of bed, I went, fuck, it's freezing. Then the sweat just started pouring. I was at my grandparents' place and the toilet was outside. I remember putting my hand on the back door and that was it. I woke up on the kitchen floor. My grandparents were standing over me. I fucking hit the kitchen table, busted my fucking elbow. Just kaboom. Holy cow. Huh. Yeah, but I'd get that sometimes where I get really low blood sugar where I'd always be like I do cardio first and have breakfast. And without fail, probably 30, 40 minutes after breakfast, I'll be sitting there. My eyes are open. I'm like, fuck, everything's getting really bright. Yeah. And then, it, then it gets really dark. I'm like, i got to get dressed for the gym. And I undo <clears> my <throat> cupboard. I'm looking in the cupboard. I'm like, I fucking can't see anything. I'm grabbing shirts trying to tell what color they yeah. are. I'm like, fuck <clears> me <throat> dead. 
that's you probably had a high carb, low fat breakfast, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much You're it's just right. like oatmeal, and oatmeal and stuff, and a protein drink and stuff, and no fat or anything. Yeah. yeah. It's a terrible talking. feeling. It's like the especially when, you, I, especially when you know it's coming on. It's, like, it's a terrible <laughs> feeling. The sweat is like ridiculous. Uh-huh. Like I've at least twice at work, I've gone into the bathroom and stripped naked in the bathroom because I will drench my my clothes and I'm like dressed in you know nice work attire. Do you do that? Do you do that? Do you do that in hopes of getting a pay rise with the boss in there or what? What's going on? I am the boss. I am the uh, boss. But yeah, uh, I still so do you're that. just you're just showing the other workers who's boss in there. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, I'm going in the bathroom in five minutes. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not back in 40 seconds, come check on me. Yeah. I'm going to be in there naked. Come on in. <laughs> you want to get ahead in this business? You got to give it. Uh, <laughs> come on back. <laughs> oh, they'd be so lucky. Uh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a shitty feeling. I hate that. Mm-hmm. And then you, yeah. and then you typically. Well, wait too, you get, when you get that, you get the shaky too. The rah, rah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. When I think of that dieting, oh my god, I'm like, fuck, I need something. And then if, if like it was after the gym, I just start eating. That's like you don't feel satisfied. You got to just keep fucking eating and fucking. Yeah, it doesn't because it doesn't it doesn't correct it right away. So you mm. still have low blood sugar, even though you've yeah. eaten a hundred fucking carbs of gummy bears. Uh-huh. You're just like, Bleh. and then you end up fucking. Yeah. And then it hits your lady like, oh, I feel full now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and now your sugar is through the roof. <laughs> Ah, the, but, joys uh, I, the joys I miss of dieting, not. Yeah. Um, I do you ever get that too when you be staring at something and you get that like, there's just like a ball of light. <laughs> it's like you just see this round light. Even if you close your eyes, you see this fucking white light thing. I used to pretend it was like God coming to visit me. I don't know why, but I'm like, oh yeah, I see you, God. Yeah, I see the light. If I stare, even though my eyes are shut, I'd focus on this light and it'll get bigger and bigger. And then it would get smaller, and then this w- thing would go around. It's almost like I'm looking at my eye and the pupil, but a light version of it while my eyes are shut. You never got that? No, I've not taken LSD. <laughs> well, this was without LSD. <laughs> this is just me <laughs> fucking dieting. Low blood sugar really did that? Cool. Be I really can try cool. next I'd, time I get low blood sugar. Yeah, I'd close my eyes, and I'd just stare at it. It's like then it would get bigger and smaller, just this like white tunnel-looking thing. And then it'd like go bigger and smaller. It almost looked like I'm looking at an eye, but it's like really bright, reflecting at me. So I'm thinking, and it's like a reflection of something here. And then it would move up. If I move my eye up, it would go up, and then it would go down. And then it would like, it'd be like half like this. And I'd try and keep staring. It would like join together, and then it would go back like this. You never saw that? The amount of detail that you're giving, you that must happen. That must have happened a lot. I did. Yeah. Fuck me. Huh. Maybe let me Google, see what that is. <laughs> I've Comes never, up, I've been, I've been, up, uh, say you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. I've been Stop a diabetic for 25 years and I've never, I don't know, like I'm, I got to make a conscious effort to close my eyes and try yeah. to do that. Yeah, next, next time you like do it, just close them and see if you see this like, it almost like you look, you know, you got the wide of your eye, the iris thing and the pupil and that. It's almost like that, but it's a glowing version looking back at you like this white, Greeny type. It's weird. See you see yeah. it next time. Yeah. As an experiment, miss your insulin next time and just fucking sit there. <laughs> I want to see. Am I the only one? That no, I had to take this? more insulin. I wonder. I want to see if anyone else sees this. Maybe I was abducted by an alien and I don't fucking know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I guess we're we're through the New York Pro. Um. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you about my Instagram page? Yeah, tell me about your Instagram page. <laughs> well, I put up a post because, you know, I go on live probably twice a day, at least once a day or twice a day I go on live and I get silly questions over and over. Oh, yeah. are, you doing, are you doing cardio? No, dickhead, I'm painting the fucking fence. What's it look like I'm doing? Of course, I'm <laughs> on a treadmill. But you just get idiots to say, hey, you're a dickhead, you're this, you're that. So I figured, you know, if you pay for information, I think you appreciate it more. And, you know, I go on there twice a day. People have YouTube channels like – Fuad or Nick Strength and RX, they all have them, and they're doing it as a service to bodybuilding. They're also doing it to make money because they get paid advertising and shit. So, yeah, I said I'm not doing this for the money. I'm just doing it because it helps pass time while I'm doing cardio for one. But I figured, you know what? Why don't I use my fame? What little of it I have left, use my fame 
to try raise money for the animals like the RSPCA that helps like the homeless dogs and cats and rabbits, horses, whatever. But also, if wild animals get hit by cars, they help them. So I just said, look, everyone on my page, I have 440 odd thousand followers. Donate a dollar or whatever you want, but a dollar minimum. That's all I'm saying. Just give a dollar and I'll answer your questions, which I come on. As I said, I do it for free anyway. But hey, if I'm going to answer them, I'd rather know that you gave a dollar and I can give it to the, I'll link my PayPal to the RSPCA, you know, so it goes to them. So I just figured I'd do that. And I put up one video doing that and there was like 60,000 views in one day and $1,100 donated. Like what 60,000 people watched this and only 1,100 people gave a dollar. Some gave $10, which is great. Some gave 20. So out of those people, some gave a lot more. So, but yeah, I'm thinking, why can't you just give a dollar? People go, well, what about the kids? I don't care about the kids. It's for the animals. <laughs> you know, yeah. The government's there to help your kids with the tax fair. You know, animal shelters are pretty much all done by charities and, you know, donations and stuff. So I yeah. did another video today and I've got a few more. So I think the last time I looked, I was at like 2,100 mark. And it's like the priest 2000 at yahoo.com. That's the PayPal, the priest 2000 at yahoo.com. Like I said, just give a dollar and just. I give it to the RSPCA for the animals. Do you, and, do you have to use PayPal? Like, would I have to use yeah. PayPal to donate? Well, that's all I've got. Some people have said, Lee, I should do another, what is it, Vimeo or something, or Veno, Venom? <laughs> Fucking Venmo, Venmo? Yeah, somewhere like you should have that. I'm like, well, I look, I don't like setting up too much shit. That's like, like the only... same shit. It's just like the new hip one. Yeah, they said it's like run by PayPal or something. I said, look, I've yeah. got one thing with PayPal. It's easy for me to stick with that. And if it's the same shit, people, you fucking link them and do it, whatever. But yeah. come on. It's like, I don't care. Even if you just fucking give it direct to the RSPCA and just show me, hey, Lee, look, here's my fucking thing. I sent it to the RSPCA. You can do that too. So, But really, out of all those people, that's all that's donated so far. Them fucking cheapskates, I tell you. Christ, I wish, I, wish I could fucking... I wish I could know now if there's like a little tick near their name. So when they ask me a question, I know they donated. And the ones that didn't, I'll just fucking ignore them. <laughs> yeah. One dollar. Come on, it's like, miss a coffee. I'll miss whatever. On my last video, I said, look, just miss a couple of fucking test shots or Decker shots and shit <laughs> like that. You know, just fucking. <laughs> a couple? Well, half a one. No, just a dollar. A dollar. Yeah. Take, take half a cc on Wednesday mm. instead of a full no, just, cc. Just go without your fucking frozen Coke from McDonald's today. <laughs> give me <laughs> a dollar. <laughs> and the good thing is that if they give a dollar from America or England, it's about a dollar fifty, a dollar sixty here. And trust me, people have let me know. Hey, Lee, I gave you a dollar, but it ended up being a dollar sixty nine, so you got extra. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whoa, fucking, woo. Those animals are going to be living in the lap of luxury now, that extra sixty nine uh. cents. You owe me. Yeah. Hold on. This is what they should have done. They should have put in a dollar. Then it comes at the exchange, 169. Hold on. I don't actually have to give a dollar. Let me put in 72.1 cents. Hey, that's an Australian dollar. That's all i got to donate is 72 cents. Yeah. That's Jesus, what I would don't, do. Don't go over. <laughs> I don't uh, want to fucking... I don't want to fucking ruin your mortgage payment by giving the, the animals a dollar for the month. Yeah. For sake. And then people go, well, Lee, some people don't have a dollar. I'm thinking, bullshit. If you're fucking on your fucking phone watching me do these fucking lives, you've got internet connection, you've got shit, you've got a fucking phone, you aren't fucking destitute, you've got a fucking dollar, so don't tell me bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a dollar. Come on. Yeah, everyone come watching on. everyone watching you online has a dollar. Put it that way. I know. It's like they just want shit for free, don't they? And like I said, I don't mind doing it for free, but – Everybody else charges, and that, and people go, well, I should have one of those pages where I looked at it, the OnlyFans page. I think movie stars have, and people do it. They even show their tits. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can set the fee for 10 or $15 monthly. You can go on and put whatever content you want. And it's like I think you get 80%. They take 20%. But it's like I'm not doing it because if I did the OnlyFans, okay, that would be money for me then, but I'm not doing it for me. I'm just making it so easy to go to PayPal. I showed the thing there where it says your favorite charity because in PayPal, you can choose your favorite charity. You just type it in and it links it to it. So when you get the money in your account, you just hit donate and the money goes straight to that charity. And it's like, oh, come on, people. It's for the animals. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good idea. Hopefully the, uh, 
No, it'd be different if I, I did 400,000 people or gave a dollar and I got $400,000. Then you saw yeah. me driving a Ferrari. Well, you know. <laughs> oh, he's got an H1 again. He's got a H1 again. But look, he does have a dog from the shelter with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dog told me to buy this H1. <laughs> he that, loves it. <laughs> that's cool, though. 2000 not bad. That's not bad. No, it's good. That's, that's, I mean, that's it's a big not. Help. That's a big help because normally, like last year, I gave probably 2000 of my own money over the year because summertime last year, I brought lots of those big, like, well, not big, but decent. I brought like 10 swimming pools for the animals because they get so hot out there because it's out near the country a bit. Yeah, and then yeah. every every week I'd fill up the four-wheel drive. I'd go to one of the garages where I sell bags of ice and fill it up and take ice out there to put in the water for the animals. And then generally I get like different stuff, like they're always after blankets and different things like that. Yeah. So, you know, you know, there's a tax write-off for me. So even, like I said, even if people donate and then I give that money, I'm not taking the money, but it's a tax write-off because you can keep the receipt and say, hey, I donated this much to the... Right, right, right. But, yeah, hey, I, just speaking want, of... I, just, I just want people to help. That's all. I just, you know, because especially yeah. now because well, it's, it's not Christmas yet, but Christmas comes up and everyone, can we get a cute puppy or a kitten? And then sadly, a couple of months later, it's not a cute puppy and kitten. Oh, I have to walk it. Oh, I've got to feed it. I've got to pick up the shit. And sadly, all these fucking animals get thrown back in the fucking shelters. That's like, uh, yeah, I'd like to throw some fucking kids in the fucking shelters, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, we're uh, we're thinking about getting a dog. Not oh. not not very not soon, but we're we're in the process of uh, of. Okay. Uh, closing on a house so once uh, that happens and once we get settled and everything we're thinking about Ger- a german shepherd maybe oh they're nice german shepherds are nice dogs what kind of dog would you get see i love german shepherds i'd probably get another german shepherd when i had that akita it was a beautiful dog oh the yeah akita. but german shepherds are wonderful and then but then too it's like see i've had big dogs and then i've also had little dogs like like a little maltese type terrier and yep. I had a car, I had a Khan Terrier. It was a great dog, you know, like from the Wizard of Oz, Toto. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. little dog, little dogs are great. They have so much fucking personality. Little dogs, like they're fucking great little dogs because, you know, they're just full of personality. So the big dogs, but you know, big dogs, a big dog. So, but yeah, it's I would like say. a little dog, honest, because I'm, because I'm, I don't want to, I don't know. The little dog is more manageable. <clears throat> yeah, they are, they are more manageable. But, and I said, then they got great personalities, but. Yeah. Have a look at some of those little terrier type dogs, like a Khan terrier and stuff like that, like Toto. They're like I said, they're not super little, but they're like you know just this big. But they're a good sized dog, and like I said, they're much more manageable to take in the car or come inside. They're not like a big German Shepherd. Going, bah, 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 fucking, there goes the right. face. There goes the fucking TV. There goes fucking. <laughs> right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They can even go to the bathroom inside, can't they? Or are they not that small? Yeah. No, you can't. Oh, yeah, they could. Yeah, because now you can get those things. Like if you can buy um. Like, so I've seen them now. You can get them. They're pretty good. It's like probably, say, four foot or not even three foot across by three foot. It looks like fake turf you can put inside. Yeah. And the dog and the dog goes on. If they pee or whatever, it just drains underneath. Oh, it yeah. Just, you just hose it out. So, yeah. They're... Yeah, I've seen those. But generally, like I said, those dogs, when I had my territory, the dogs are, if you get them young, they're so easy to train to go outside and just take a shit or a leak and then – Pretty much they can hold it and they'll just let you know when they want to go out. You let them go out, they race outside, do their business and come back in. Right. Yeah. You don't want to come home and find a smoldering fucking German shepherd poo like this fucking big fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had that. She had a German like... shepherd before and it was a fucking, it was a phenomenal dog for sure. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, I don't know. I always, what I used to do sometimes, because when I wanted, like I said, most of my animals I did get from the pounds I normally go there, like I said, because I love all animals. I don't really like to say, this is dog I'm going to get. I'd sometimes go to the pound. Sometimes you buy off breeders. They've been bred that many times. They all have fucking problems. So generally the pounds have puppies and that mixed dog. Every time we've had a mixed dog, never had a fucking problem with it. They've been the best dogs fucking ever. A couple of times I've had a girlfriend and bought them a fucking purebred. Fucking problems. They're little fucking kind of inbred little fucking things. It's like. You know, it's going back to your family at the Appalachians, you know. You just fucking inbreed too much. It fucking goes, Doo-doo. So it's fucking. <laughs> but, you know, these pound oh, yeah, animals are the best. But the thing was, I'd just go to the pound. It's like, okay, I might like German shepherds. I might like this. But I'll just walk up and down the aisles and see what's in the cages. And pretty much I let the animals pick me. The last cat I got, I went into this room. There would have been 30 kittens in there. I'm like, oh, 
I was after a grey one. There probably would have been 15 grey ones. Some had stripes, some had this. I just sat down, they're running around. This one grey one just came racing around and just went boom in my arm and just laid there. I'm like, oh, that's cute. And then the other ones just didn't pay much attention. He woke up, he looked at me, went back to sleep. He walked on this side of my arm, then he walked up onto my shoulder and then came back down. So the 30 minutes I was in there, he never left my side. Like, have you picked one yet? I said, no, I think this one picked me. So, and that's the one I brought. And yeah. every night, every night he sleeps in my arm in bed. He just follows me around everywhere, jumps up. Yeah. And he, he's the one that gives me the cuddle. So generally I go there. I, I, you know, I find the animals, when you look at them, they'll pick you type things. So it's yeah. one of those things. So That's what happened with uh, our the first cat we got, Gus. Mm-hmm. Gus is, we went to uh, PetSmart and we were looking at cats mm-hmm. and we were like holding, you know, they had like eight, eight choices or something and we were holding yeah. them. And there was one cat that like the cat knew that there was people inside and like looking at, looking at cats and, uh, or, you know, people inside. Yeah. And it was fucking going nuts. Like it yeah. was the only cat that was in there, like meowing over, like take me fucking out of the cage. Mm-hmm. And we looked at one and then another one that I'm like, give me the one that's, that's, that's so loud. <laughs> and we got him and he was like the most, the same thing. Like, affectionate, like yeah, well, yeah my super very, lovable. Yeah. And I'm very, like, this is the one. <laughs> but my first cat, when I moved home, Sophie, I went up to the pound and I was looking cause you look through the glass window first, they got their little room and some are up on the glass window rubbing on it or just looking at you. This one was down the bottom on the floor. Like they had this ramp they can walk up on and she was under the ramp. And they normally give you a description, you know, where the cat was from, if it's found or a stray, yeah. what its history is. And this one said, does not like men, does not like women, hates kids, shits and pisses in the house. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. And the lady goes, yeah. She goes, I don't think that one's going to last much longer with a report card like that because people see it. They go, well, we're not taking it. I said, really? I said, what? So they're going to put it down. They said, yeah, well. You know, no one, if no one's fucking interested. I said, well, can I go around and have a look? So she took me around the back and took me in the cage. And like I said, they've got this ramp that goes up to this window bench and the window's there so people on the other side can see. So I just went and rested on it. As soon as I rested there, out she comes. She come walking up the ramp. She come over. She rubbed on me and licked my head. And the lady that works here, she goes, well, fuck me. She likes you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this old lady said. She goes, well, fuck me. She likes you. Yeah. Goes, yeah. I said, well, can I take her home and see? She goes, oh. I think we're closing now, but maybe come back tomorrow. I said, oh, okay. And she goes, oh, no, hold on. You can take her now. And I took her home, and she's never shit. She's never pissed. She sleeps on me. She's, you know, everywhere. Yeah. So I never had a problem with her. But, yeah, just that one of those things. I just went and had a look at it. But, yeah, yeah. If, you, if, I, if I, if people judge by what it says on that card, you're like, oh, fuck, we don't want to take her home. Yeah. She's that bad. But, you know, I think, too, whoever had her before can abuse it. Yeah. And one of the other cats we've got here, Pixel, the one that's got the half black face and that. Right. When I went up there, because I sometimes go up there and just take photos with them so they can put on their website, you know, or I put them on my website. I said, oh, this is so beautiful. This one, my wife would love it. So I took a photo with her, <clears throat> and then the next day I said, oh, Lee, thanks. She got adopted. But then 24 hours later, the people brought her back. They're like, oh, I didn't get on with their other cat. And I'm like, well, fuck, you know, if you take a new cat home, of course it's going to take longer than 24 hours for the cat yeah. to get used to the other cat. You know, it's just the way it is. So I felt that bad. I told Rachel, I said, look, this was on like a Tuesday. I said, if it's there next Monday, I'll come get it because I, I want to. They said, okay, we'll just there. Yeah. So I think it was late. It was Tuesday. I said, Thursday. Fuck it. I went up and got it. <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, and she's been great ever since. They have been great. I have, I have six now, six cats. <laughs> wow. Six cats. Yeah. Yeah, we have three. We have three. One we rescued. One was just like outside astray. Mm-hmm. One was rescued from a house where it was like relegate, relegated to the basement because there was I'm dogs. Just gonna, I'm going to open up my door here and I'll see if one comes in. Oh, nice. Okay. But yeah, we, uh, kitty, kitty, we kitty. have three. I think three is a good, a good amount. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, Sophie was by herself all the time. Then I think we'll get one as a friend for Sophie. And then I just went from there. Then I see another one. Then if I went out to the RSPCA to take some stuff out while I'm there, I'm like, I'll just have a look in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <I> look. <laughs> yeah, I don't like like it seems like the older uh, I get, the harder it is for me to see that shit and not want to get one. Uh, when I was like I think, nineteen, I really didn't give a fuck. But now yeah. it's like I see the cats laying there, I'm like, fucking hey, that sucks. Mm-hmm. And it's like if I had um I don't have a gate out front, I have a huge backyard, but it was when I got up there too and I see the dogs and I'm playing with the dogs. And I hate when you walk away and they just sit behind the cage looking at you like, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> You're not taking me? I'm like, oh, don't look back. Don't look back. <laughs> yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> all right. I'd, see I don't people, know how we... I'd, see, I'd see people come in all the time when I was volunteering there. They'd bring their dogs in. It's so sad, and I can't afford to feed my dog, so I'm dropping it off, and then I see them go out front there. So I'm thinking, oh, you can buy fucking cigarettes, can't you, but you can't buy a bag of dog food. And it's so sad because yeah. they give me the dog's leash, so I got the dog, and they've walked off, and the dog is looking at them like, where are you going? Where are you going? It's like, you know, it's like dogs have feelings and shit too. If you have had a yeah, dog yeah. for a couple, couple of years, now all of a sudden you just dump it off. The dog's like, where'd my owner go? You know, it's yeah, like, shit. How many definitely. times do you see? I've seen dogs, like I said, I've seen dogs where, have you ever seen a dog at the front of a store? Where well, some dogs are friendly, but some dogs are just at the front of a store. And as you walk out, they're like, they're just looking for the owner. They won't pay you. You can say, hi, dog. They just go. But as soon as they mm-hmm. see the owner, oh, <laughs> It's like yeah. they get so fucking excited. So Definitely. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. No question. All right. So uh, actually yeah, my that, – uh, that, that, that was about – we got on the dogs from my Instagram stories. That's how we got on Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. My wife All said that people she, donating a dollar. <laughs> my, uh, my wife said that she is interested to see the room that you're in. Are you able, to pan, around, are you able to pan around the room or no? This room, yeah. Why is she interested? It's, this I don't is know. my this is my junk cool. room. This is my junk room. It's got photos on the wall here. This is a junk cupboard. Nice. And this is like a shelf with all watches and shit on over here. What are all and the those, watches and shit for? Oh, you know, stuff? S Force watches and down on the floor shoes. Nice. But all all this stuff over here is like costumes and stuff and in these boxes there's awards and racing suits and stuff like that i've still got to go through all that even clothes that don't fit me there's more bags down there with shoes on this was i've been here almost two years and i still haven't sorted it out but when i go through it that's a lot of the stuff i put online and then i um put the money to the rspca yeah but that side the room i've got to buy more shelves and shit for but i'll get through it eventually if you could only save one of those pictures on the back wall, which one would you save? A picture? Yeah, like those pictures. If you could only save one of them, which one would it be? <clears throat> um, probably this one, the one the fan drew. That's of awesome. Me, of now coming close for you. I don't... Can you see it? Yeah. What's it say? The the blonde myth, Lee Priest, DC. The, the last son of Krypton. That's yeah, probably, sick. That's well, I super could, sick. I could say that where George Bush made me honorary Texan, but that's not a picture. That's just... George W. Yeah, signature and all. Holy oh. shit. Yeah, but probably that one. All the rest with the stars and... So you met George yeah. Bush? Yeah, Hemsworth. Yeah, my friend... Still works at the capital of Texas. He was working there when Bush was there. Yeah, I got ones of Arnold and Cena signed that one too, Lee. Thanks for the inspiration and that. And Travolta and Chris Hemsworth and other shit. I got the Knight of Champions Awards from England and New York. I got me racing up there. But nah, probably just that cartoon one. Let's see the New York. (laughs) Where's the New York one? The the NOC. That's up here. Hold on. Yeah. That's That's awesome. That's the British one. Hold on. The New York one's down here. Yeah. That one. That's legit. That's cool. And that's the NABBA Hall of Fame. Nice. And this is where Metropolis in America, you know, the city of Metropolis. Yeah, yeah. And in recognition of individual superior achievement, special and personal interest in the city of Metropolis, home of Superman, the fearless crusader of truth, justice, Lee Priest, hereby is named the Superman of Metropolis with all the rights, privileges, and that that's that city of Metropolis. See, Mayor, city of Metropolis. I think it's just outside Chicago somewhere, isn't it? Superhero. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Somewhere I'm not sure. So I hope uh, your wife. I hope your wife's happy now for touring. That was room. good. That was good. Um. I like this does question. She wanna, does she want to know what I do in here when I'm naked? Probably. She didn't say <laughs> it to me, but fucking hell. Uh, uh, if I get some <laughs> weird inboxes, I know who it's from. <laughs> I know I know it's not really Steve. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, Borges John 16. So he, he asked what a typical offseason day was like in your prime, but I want to oh. I want to test your memory here. Offseason day. What's a what's like a, what was a typical like? Um, I mean, assuming you were, I guess off season, it's not that specific. Like maybe off season where you were really like focused on bodybuilding, but like <laughs> that was that was never an off season where I was. Yeah, I guess I guess like, well, just like a typical day, I guess. Like, what would it be a typical day like? Heart of the off season in like 1997. You competed a lot in 1997, and you did well. Mm-hmm. But even the off season, all I did was eat. Eat and train. I didn't really, and even eating wise, when people say, "Oh, what was a meal like?" It was a normal meal. I didn't force feed myself. The only thing was, I probably just ate like, say, if I did eat steak and vegetables and rice, an hour later I might have McDonald's, and then right. I might have a packet of chips an hour later, and then yeah. an hour and a half later some chocolates and ice cream, and then after that I might have a normal meal again. So I still would eat like decent meals of steak and rice and chicken or whatever. And, but the chicken's probably rotisserie, not just chicken breasts or something. But then it was all the shit in between that made up all the calories or like the, I always tell people I was like a cow. I just grazed all day. I was yeah. just picking that little bit. You know, people go, well, how much could you sit down? How many pizzas could you eat at once? I was never that type of person to eat a ton of food all at once of the same thing. I just preferred right. to pick at things here and there and stuff like that. So I find it amazing how heavy you were able to get, because it well, doesn't seem like you ate. It doesn't seem like you ate that much food for how heavy you no, got. No, I said to Michael Hearn, that's probably when he says there was any regrets in my bodybuilding career. Like I said, I wouldn't have been take more gear or do more stuff. I probably would have been be more serious in the off season, because in the off season I just didn't give a fuck. I just was a normal person. Yes, I'd still go to the gym and bust my ass, but then after I trained, I might go have a big meal at the firehouse of fucking hamburger, chips, pancakes, whatever, and I'd get a little bit full, and then I, I could easily go five, six hours and not eat again. So sometimes in the off-season, I might have only had two meals a day, but there might have been bigger meals. In between, I might have had a protein drink, but that was it. I was never regular at all. I could sometimes train in the off-season, have a big workout. Then if I said, oh, shit, i got to go here, got to go there, I might train and not eat the four hours after my workout. So I was never – Contest time, yes, every two and a half hours regimented like I'm in the military. Eat this time, train that time, whatever. So we come off season, I'm like, fuck that. I'm just going to train and I'll eat when I want to eat. I'll do this. Or like I said, I could easily train and go to a muesli bar and be like, oh, I'm fine for a couple of hours. And my friends would say the same thing. They go, how do you go so long without fucking eating and keep all that size? They were like, how do you yeah. keep your fucking muscle and your barely fucking Massive. Like, I don't know. So that's probably the only regret I had probably in the off season. If I had have been more regimented, maybe I could have been a bit better and stuff like that. But I was just like, you know what? Because I'm so regimented contest time in the off season, I just want to fucking be normal and just eat. What was your training? Like. What about your training in the off season? Was it were you tra- like how many days a week were you training? I still pretty generally. much trained five days. Did you train so harder I, in the off season or harder pre contest? Um, I'd go a lot heavier in the off season. But yeah. I train just as hard. But yeah, right. because off season, off season, I might train once every, like I said, five days. Weekend off contest time was every fourth day, sometimes twice a day. So like you know, four on, one off. So then plus the cardio. But yeah, but I train, I train just as hard. But as I was losing body weight and stuff like that, I just train a bit smarter. I wouldn't go, hey, I'm going to try lift the same poundage as I did it when I was 285. Now I'm only weighing 205 pounds. So. You know, just with the joints and shit like that, I'd always be smart right. about it. You never did a strict off season, like even when you were young. No. <laughs> Interesting. Never. It didn't didn't seem to hurt you at all. <laughs> no, that's but yeah, said, maybe but... it could have been better, but I don't know. Yeah, it would have been interesting. Yeah, maybe if I, who knows, if I had to put on another ten kilos of muscle, if I had to been like I said, because like I said, come off season. As soon as that contest was over, I'm like, fuck taking gear, fuck eating every couple of hours. I'll eat when I want to fucking eat and eat what I want. You know, some days I would go eat and help you all day, but then next day I'd be like, fucking, I'll get up and have pancakes, and then I go fucking Chinese, and then I have whatever. So, and like yeah. I said, too, because you know what it's like. If you have a big fatty meal sometimes, say when I had Kentucky or something that's high in fat, you know, your guts are full. You've got that satisfied feeling for fucking hours. Uh, like yeah, I said, yeah, if, I'm not, yeah. if, if I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat in the off-season. You know, if people go, I'm not hungry, but, oh, it's been two and a half hours. I have to fucking eat anabolic window now. If I don't fucking eat, I'm going to crash. 
It's like, yeah. you know, I probably ate it's almost the same as similar to like when I was dieting for a while, I could have been dieting on 4,000 calories a day with my cardio two, three hours a day and the training twice a day. And then I'd have that cheat day where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to eat all this fucking food. So I'd have my cheat day where I'd go have one big meal at breakfast and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm a bit blown. Because you, you've been eating so clean, you know, for weeks, you go have a big fatty meal for breakfast, my gut goes, Bruh. yeah, like, oh, fuck, now I'm full, I'm not hungry. I'm like, yeah. that's my cheat. That's my cheat day. I got to try and eat all these mm-hmm. foods that I thought about eating. So by the end of the cheat day, I probably had two, three meals at the most. And if I had like the calories in them, I wouldn't have been probably would have been two and a half, three thousand calories. I was eating more fucking food when I was eating clean. So it's just because right. the food, because the food's different in fats and salts and shit that your gut just goes. Bleh. Yeah. Because I said, because you know when you're dieting, every two and a half, oh fuck, after you have a meal, an hour lady like. Oh, when do I eat again? I'm fucking hungry. When do I eat again? I'm hungry. So it's yeah. like off season or cheat days, I was always full. So I'm like, eh, I'll eat when I'm hungry. So, huh? I never eat when I'm not hungry ever. Yeah. I don't have any problem gaining weight. So like, it doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. Plus you like cut out all the cardio mm-hmm. in the off season, but some of your off seasons, you would look like you'd be like two seventy. But you'd be like blown out like a fucking balloon. But then there was other ones where you looked like like pretty bad. Like mm-hmm. that fucking photo shoot where you're looking in the fridge and you got a gut and shit and you're hairy. Oh, yeah. Well, that one I had to really make myself look bad because I wanted that. Like, because you don't had, even. I had some photos almost the same time that Lonnie had, and I still had abs in that. But for those pictures, I bent over in the fridge. You're like, no, really bend over and like they said, do a side chest shot. So I went like this. And it looked really good. They said, no, no, just put your hands there like that, but slouch down, push your stomach out. So it's pretty much just like clasp your hand like a side chest, but yeah. don't flex anything and push your stomach out. So you're really looking fucking, you know, so there was no effort at all. So I had to really like everyone bend it over in the fridge, just like let it all just hang out, like just, you know, don't hold it up type thing. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, we'll have to have Scott pull it up, pull up those photos. I just, those photos- I just, I just had to measure my waist the other day because I want to give a shout out to Cardillo who's made me that new belt. Did you see it? I put a video of it on Instagram. Mm, I don't think, I don't know. Uh, thanks for following my Instagram, Jeff, you cunt. Yeah, well, you know, I, I put off. a video on there. <laughs> he made me this nice new belt. He, had, had the, he said, oh, Lee, I need your waist measurement. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. I haven't measured my waist for <laughs> fuck knows how long. So I get the tape measure out. I'm like, oh, do I really want this? I'm not even looking down you. I just connected. I'm like, should I look down? I looked down. I was 33, so it wasn't too bad. I'm like, well, that's Fuck. not too bad. At the at the belly button? Yeah, so I'm 33. Yeah, I'm 33. Yeah. How much do you weigh right now? You're looking a little thicker. 99 kilos. Yeah, so you're about, mm, I don't know. Close to, close to 220. Damn. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it was, so, uh, we're, about, we're about the same. We're about the same. I might see it's like I'm looking in the fucking mirror. Yeah. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Except, I, I, looked, uh, I looked up when I looked at when you came on today and looked in there and thought, fuck, didn't I shave this morning? I went, oh, that's Jeff. <laughs> that's Jeff. I fucking thought I was looking at myself. Yeah, I fucking wish. <laughs> the difference is you're probably for sure way leaner and also four inches shorter. If you're five, mm-hmm. five and a half, I'm like five, nine, barely, more like five, eight and three quarters. Nah, that's five nine in bodybuilding terms, isn't it? Yeah, I know five ten. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm seventeen in bodybuilding terms. Eight nine and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like when those bodybuilders take one... photos, when those bodybuilders take photos and they put it up, and they go, "Well, I just want you to know, in this picture, I'm not pumped and I'm carb depleted." And fuck, oh, oh yeah. Shut up. Don't give yeah. us every fucking. No, you're not. You're fucking full as fuck. You just want people to say, "Oh, imagine when he's really pumped up and he's carved up. How good he look." <laughs> yeah, powerlifters uh, do that shit too, real like bad. They're yeah. always like they'll they'll hit a lift and then then they'll list all the reasons why it's more <laughs> impressive than it is. Oh, I didn't even sleep. I haven't been out. Haven't ate that much today. I didn't even like this. And it's like, dude, like I didn't have know, my smelling salts. Uh, I yeah, didn't have anything. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. I missed a yeah. meal. Oh, wow. I, I know. Thought, what, God forbid. What we fucking do? Yeah. So but this yeah, question I, is a – go ahead. I was just going back to the thing. Yeah, it always reminds me because my friend Adam, I'd always hang out with. He was always eating all the time. 
He goes, you're not going to eat us? And now he goes, fucking hell. He goes, how do you keep your size when you don't fucking eat as much? I'm like, I don't know. It's like, yeah. So you're fucking, uh, you, I think you're uh, maybe not of this world, Lee. Don't have me play the theme again. I uh, know. You may not be <laughs> of this world, my friend. I played the banjos that made you homesick. I hear that Superman theme. Don't play it again. Me- that makes me want to go back to Krypton. <laughs> yeah. Um, this guy, Jim WP91. No, oh, Jim WP91. Uh, opinion on gyms being open that do not require masks. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really know. Well, what, well, what's wrong with that? You, know, you don't want to wear a mask while you're training. There were people that actually passed out because they were running on the treadmills and shit and just breathing back in their carbon. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, should I, I had to go to get my, on Tuesday, I had to go get that cornea done. So if I close my eye right now, you're just a fucking blur on this eye because it's still all fucked up from the laser where they keep your eye open. I could smell it burning. This is the funniest thing, right? They put that clamp in, like in the horror movies. Uh, I, got the la- I got the laser there and the laser's going. It's like when I got the tattoo near here. Anything that gets near my nose, it fucking sets me off and I'm about to sneeze. So I'm fucking laying there in the laser's there. <laughs> oh, no. Skull. It's, and like, for like, I think, how long is this going to take? It's like, we're almost done. You know, when you're trying to not sneeze, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm thinking if I sneeze and go, I chew, the laser will go. Bear. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be horrified. Because you're not like, you're not going to sneeze and it'd be like, still. No. So I'm no way. I'd be like, how'd you get this scar off your head? Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll just like, sneeze. <laughs> yeah. I can smell it burning. I'm like, oh, fuck, how long? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to breathe like this, and it's getting worse and worse. This eye starts watering because I'm trying to hold the sneeze. And like we're done now. I'm like, good. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. But no, if you uh, you don't need a mask at the gym. Look, if you're that worried about catching COVID or whatever, and like you wouldn't go to the fucking gym to start with. Trust me, you can get it from touching whatever. Okay, people and sit that wipe shit down and stuff, but people are breathing heavy. You know, the mask ain't gonna do shit. So. I have no problem with people not wearing a mask at the gym. If I was worried about COVID and shit, I wouldn't go to the gym. Yeah, obviously. Are they doing, are they like, uh, are the hospitals there empty and very like slow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just here. took, I had to take um, Rachel's not feeling well. So we took her up to the emergency today and that had to wait around for fucking hours. And then, yeah, pretty quiet. Normally night time. The times I've been sick and gone to hospital at night time, that's when they're busy because all the fucking crack addicts, meth heads come in, the drinkers, fucking, oh, it's yeah. fucking full on at night time. fucking <laughs> Oh, shit. It's like, hello. <laughs> it's yeah, I mean, entertaining. I guess... It's entertaining at night time. My, my mate actually works security up there, so I called him this morning. He knocked off at seven this morning. He goes, that's pretty quiet now, Lee. Come on up. Because he, he works yeah. from like six at night, the six the next day. But uh, last time I was up there, what did I go up for? Went to get oh just something checked. I went up at night time and some guy got his father brought him in and dropped him off out the front, fucking naked. He walks in and shits on the floor and fucking I'm like, hey, good old fucking hospitals, I tell you. Jesus. And I go oh. Fuck yeah. Had to fucking rope it off with the witch's hats, put paper over the top of his turret while they go get shit to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that's one of those things when I'm sitting in the waiting room in the emergency because so many people are coming and going I'm thinking I came in with probably something small I'm going to leave with some fucking big fucking virus for sure because you know yeah. the amount of sick people that go in there <laughs> then you go to the toilet like now what if they touched in the bathroom here so you're trying to use paper towels to touch area and this and that and, and then there's one guy there he was like covered in tattoos off his head talking to everyone then of course he saw I had tattoos guess who he wanted to fucking talk to of course I'm like oh shit here we go and he's one of those guys too so how you going mate a fucking ass i'm like oh people probably think he's my fucking dad or something because we both got fucking tattoos he had a face tattoo as well being a fuck so he's standing there talking to him like oh just shut the fuck up i don't really want to call my name so i can go into another room call my name (laughs) yeah that's the worst and then when he wasn't talking to me he's just talking to him fucking self (laughs) yeah i'm like oh someone saved me yeah, I got trapped by a woman the other day, and it was like, you need you need to you need to be in an institution immediately. Should she was <laughs> coming out of her mouth, I was like, fuck me. 
<clears throat> you have to um, wonder what it's like in their head, don't you? What what their world's like when you fucking live it in was there. It's so like... bizarre. Like, <laughs> just like stories that were clearly not true, but well thought out. Like, just piled on each other in no particular and, order. And the like, worst thing is you've got to stand there and actually act like yeah. they are true and agree. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Ah, oh, so you rode the unicorn to the fairy hospital yeah. and the fairies come out, did they? Yeah, oh, yeah. to ignore the comments about slitting throats and, and fucking just like, dude, twisted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, then you see you're on the news the next day. <laughs> yeah. Mass, mass murderer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Should have stopped her. <laughs> it's your fault, Jeff. <laughs> you should you should have sold her some Jinkanova. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim also asked same thing about the gym. You think it will be the last place where people are allowed to be maskless? I think so. Well, like I said, gyms should be open because for one, most gyms have the sanitizing wipes. You have a towel. They got spray bottles to wipe shit down. You go to the gym. You swipe your card. It says Jeff was here. It tells the time you're there, the time you left. They got cameras. They can see who you're near, who you're past. So. Really, out of all the places, gyms are more one of the most fucking controlled environments because yeah. they know who's come and gone and what time you're actually there. How many people go into a supermarket? You wouldn't know who was in there, what time they were in, what time they yeah. left, or fucking what they've touched. So gyms are really probably one of the most safest. And tattoos, when they close down tattoo parlors, I know when I've got tattoos, if you get a tattoo, those places are fucking high. Oh, disappeared on me. Hey, oh, you're back again. You're back. Scott's fucking, Scott's fucking with you. Are we good? Yeah, Scott fell asleep on the control. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he must have. Yeah, he's fucking. Okay. Yeah, tell okay. your mum to pay a fucking internet bill. Jesus Christ, <laughs> seriously. Stop collecting <laughs> plates and pay the internet bill. <laughs> uh. Uh. I'm so, going to yeah. send her one of – she's got the one of the girl and the rabbit and the little boy and whatever. I'm going to send her one of two puppies playing in a field. Beautiful plate. <laughs> nice. Or one of a bird. It's like a bird sitting on a cage. Beautiful plumage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, a, gym, a gym's pretty safe. I'd, uh, out of all places that you go, that would probably be the main one where you There's know, also like, the fact that nobody's getting sick from COVID anywhere. So yeah. that that's also uh, probably it's probably safe. Like, it's oh, did you see that thing I put? No, you wouldn't have seen it because you didn't go on my Instagram page. Up. But I put up that thing that uh, this newspaper here in Australia, one of the top newspapers, they did a you know that every time on the news, six more died today. Always in the elderly homes or the hospice, you know, where el- elderly people go. Yeah, so the majority of them are, are are dying from other fucking causes. 100%. Exactly, exactly. But what they did was. They did a thing the exact same time last year in 2019 to now, this time last year, and then 2020 from the beginning to now, 33% more people died last year without COVID mm-hmm. in those homes than this year. Yeah. So they're like, here we have COVID, but yeah. more died died last year. Yeah. It's like, they're If old, that's true, it. which if, if you – I don't know. How, it seems obvious if you fucking mm-hmm. – don't if you get away from your goddamn TV and observe real life, it's fucking obvious that that's true. And mm-hmm. if that's true, it's impossible for there be a, for there to be a pandemic. I you bet, can't I have bet, a pandemic no. without more deaths in empty hospitals and Walmart open all the time and nobody getting sick there and every mm-hmm. other fucking retailer. You can't, have a, you can't have a you can't have a pandemic <laughs> when ninety nine point something is of the survival rate. <laughs> It's so fucking. They said like a college here. They sent five hundred. So they said five hundred kids tested positive. Mm. None of them were sick. If any of them no. were sick, they wouldn't have ended up to. Uh, they wouldn't have ended mm. up there. And all like the like they none well, of them. What we should like, do is to show what a pandemic is. It kills everybody, young and old. Let's go to New York and release Ebola, and yeah. then we're really showing what a fucking pandemic like. is. When people start bleeding from their fucking eyes and dying, no matter what age you are. But yeah, yeah these people, yeah, more people died last year without COVID. Like, say COVID disappears now and come 2021, I bet if they recorded it every day, they'd be on the news. Yeah, 10 more people died today in such and such nursing home. They're fucking sick and elderly. That's what they're in there for. They're laying there on machines, breathing. They can barely live. They die. Sadly, they yeah. die. It's like, yeah. It's like just fucking nuts. And these all these results, like they're 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 fucking 
Ah, uh, people. They just they're telling people. I'm I'm convinced now that they're telling people that they have COVID. They don't have COVID. I've heard oh, several year. stories now. Like I've heard. I'm a social person. I talk oh, to all kinds ones. of people, mm-hmm. and like I, you hear these stories and like recurring. It's just like it's just. I don't know. It's anecdotal. Like, oh, the, the did, Harvard <laughs> says, like, but they say, those like, ones in Florida. What about those ones in Florida? Remember those people that went down to the t- get tested and it was just, you know, they all filled out their form, get tested. Here's our name, number, fucking address. Yeah. But half of them got sick of waiting. So a couple of hundred left and then they all got fucking notified that they tested positive and they didn't even get the test done. Or they did did I tell you that the, story? I, I saw it on the thing here too. Yeah. They filled Lee, out all Lee. these. Yeah. My sister, my sister's did, best friend in Florida, that exact did, thing happened to her. Did that it, did exact she thing. <laughs> yeah. She went to get COVID tested, and there's a uh-huh. mob of people there, of course. Oh, I can't believe the numbers are spiking. Fucking retards. And, like, they – so, like, they yeah, they signed in to, to be there, uh-huh. and the line's a mile long. So they're like, screw this line. We're not doing this. And then they got a letter in the mail. They were p- positive. <laughs> Like, so, Matt, you could say it's many, bullshit, but it's fucking not like like and there's no reason that. you would like you wouldn't just the people I'm talking about saying this are not like wacko people. They're normal, fucking mm-hmm. successful, normal people. They're not conspiracy theorists, tin hat. They're normal fucking people. It's like and how did yeah, I how like, did I how did I, how did I just, tell us she's positive? Because like to get a test, you got to have, you know, you get something done, your blood work done. They always check it. OK, is this your name? Is this your date of birth? And then they seal it up. So it's like they didn't do any of that so they've just taken this list of names of people that come there and gone okay yeah. send them a message they're positive so say they say this one clinic five thousand are positive maybe only fucking 10 really were how do we know fucking all the yeah. others probably didn't get tested it's yeah. fucking bullshit that shit like those false positives are absolutely positively happening if you don't think it is an objective truth that they're happening i had a guy a, a firefighter Tell me right to my face, totally normal, fucking totally normal level headed guy. Like didn't he didn't even really want to talk about it. He said that they had they responded to a suicide call. The guy blew his brains out and it was it was reported as a covid death because he was covid positive. Like if you don't think that stuff is happening, you're wrong. Like Mm -hmm. it's like it's just people watch their TV and they don't observe real life. Uh. It's crazy how people are just like, you can believe what's going on. Foxy, here comes Foxy. Come here, Foxy. All my cats are coming to the door. Hold on. Hello. Is Foxy Come the here. one that was uh, reported the to orange. be an asshole on the, board, on the card? Come here. Come here. Come here, boy. This is Foxy. Here's the orange one. Come here. Hey. Come say hi to Jeff. This is Foxy. Here he is. Hello. Aww. Hi. Hi. Speak into the mic. Is that? I hear the other ones too. And that's Foxy. He's a ventriloquist. Oh, really? <laughs> Come here. I Kylo. can't even tell. Kylo, hi. This is Kylo. This is nice. the talker. Hi. Oh. Hey, everybody. Hey, Kylo. Oh. This is the one that sleeps with me all the time. He's the lovey one, isn't he? We oh, love you, Daddy. We love you, Daddy. Uh, uh, donate money, people. <laughs> you love me? Okay, off you go. <laughs> That's your big five minutes of fame, cat. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, they're all out wandering. Oh, there's, there's um, Felty. Felty's over there now. Felty, come here. Felty looks like a marmoset monkey. Hey, Rachel. Oh, can what? you grab Felty? This is the one, this cat here I got from the car park at Rachel's work. A stray, a stray cat had kittens, so oh, I okay. kept two of them. And Felty, because it's like from that TV show, the thing was Felty and the food. Hey, Felty. This is Felty. Oh. Hey. Look, it's your five Look minutes of fame. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Felty. So Get fluffy. Up. Look at the when mane. Oh, that's what I mean. When you're eating... And she's not look, and you're not looking. She gets a foot and goes like this and drags your food off. This is Pixel, the one with the half black face. Hey, Pixel. Wow. Hey, Pixie. Oh yeah. Pixel's yeah, on TV. vocal as well. Yeah, she. Oh, she does talk that one. She's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's some of them. 
I think you. Uh, I've had I've had Zoe. I've had Zoe on, and I've had Bruno on. I don't think mm-hmm. you've seen Gus. I yes, don't know. Gus when we move into the house, I'll, I'll be able to uh, show him off. Maybe my uh, my studio is b- being relegated to the basement. Oh, the but, basement. Uh, that's okay. The, se- the sex dungeon. Yeah, the sex the sex dungeon. I got Foxy sitting over there now watching. Hey, Fox, what are you doing? He's going to go exploring. Because I don't normally let him in here because there's too much shit they can get into. But he's like, oh, wow, let me have a look. Yeah. What can I get into? <laughs> uh, PDS printing. Oh, PDS says, printing. If you need any printing done, make sure you call PDS printing for mm-hmm. all your printing needs. He's an avid listener. There you go. <clears throat> I just gave him an endorsement there. I had yep. uh, all my stationery. I got done at PDS Printing, and let me tell you, Same. quality, quality bar none. Yeah. They, they no certainly, they, <laughs> they can any type of printing you need, give them a call. Mm, Tom Plant, Tom Platts said, mm-hmm. Arnold and the top guys then trained mm-hmm. a lot lighter when we, when they weren't being filmed. Was it the same in your day? Oh, well, I don't know, because Ronnie went heavy being filmed and. When he wasn't, I don't know. I always just did whatever I did. I'd never really thought about it. If I was doing my photo shoots and being filmed, I just trained. I never played it up for the camera. If I was going to go heavy, I'd go heavy. But if I wasn't feeling strong, I'm not going to try to do something stupid. Go, oh, look how much I'm using, then <laughs> type thing. Yeah. So I'm sure there are some that you'd see do videos and go too heavy and use shit form and stuff. But no, I just. If I was doing a photo shoot or video and I was training a body part, if I felt strong, I'd go heavy. If I didn't, I didn't care what people think. I'm sure people go, oh, is that all he's using? I use that much weight. Yeah. It's like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. It kind of seems crazy like to be a professional bodybuilder and lift heavier on camera. Like, you're fucking 280 with abs. Like, do you really yeah, need to lift heavier on camera? Like, And it's not about lifting the weight. It's like, yeah, if I want to do something strong, I could do back in the day. But it's like. You know, to me, it's like, okay, sometimes I might have just stuck with 150-pound dumbbells. If people go, well, I can do that. Yeah, but you might be able to do it, but are you doing it the same? Are you doing Definitely it that not. strict? Are you doing it that controlled? Are you doing it where you're squeezing it and this sort of thing? Or are you just going, uh, 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 uh. there's a big difference, too, in how you yeah. perform an exercise, yeah. I said. You know, there's a big, you know, so many variables that I've come never into play. Seen, <laughs> I've never seen a dumbbell press look as good from anyone than you, than yours looked. It looked like a fucking. It looked like it was animated. It was so smooth and perfect. It's ridiculous. Well, Jeff, I make it look good. Some guys, some guys have all the luck. Oh, Nicholas Cage, I think, is going to be in the Tiger King. It just popped up. Is he? He's going to play the Tiger King. Uh, it's like a movie, or yeah. uh, the next episodes, or what? No, they're going to make a movie about it. And I think Nicholas Cage is going to play the guy. He'd, he'd, he'd do a good part playing that guy. <laughs> He's wacky enough. Yeah. I never watched it, and I don't think I will. No, you got to watch it just for the comic value of it. It's like it's sort of be like your family in the Appalachians. It'll bring back yeah, so I don't want to watch it. It's offensive don't, to me. Don't have me pull the banjos out again. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with my dad's boyfriend. Exactly, and his uncle and his brother, and the, and the fucking we just caught it the family meat train. <laughs> family meat train, baby. Get on board, toot toot. <laughs> you and a little caboose. Uh, so this one is from our buddy kevin blewett and he said that kevin blewett is his last name so hey hey, jesus christ oh my goodness wild animals hey rachel i think foxy's gonna cause mayhem he went it's a pretty good jump there's a vertical jump there he went from the floor right up to the top of the watches now he's walking across a thing that's got clothes in it which isn't too stable hey so you're gonna bring it down aren't you look at him up there oh he's so cute isn't he let me see him stare at the side stare at the side of your fat head say hello rachel to people hello rachel jeff says hello rachel hi you're taking the hats with you (laughs) <laughs> Bye. Bye. Look at that sexy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Here you are, Matt, okay. Thank you. <laughs> you brought my hats back. 
Oh, I've got to clip this back in. You got a picture of my. Am I back on track? Yep. Perfect. So this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a long one. So it's, uh, that's sick. Thank you. That's a good mental. look. It says mental. Do I look good in hats? Sometimes that I think I look good in hats. I don't know. How do I look? I think maybe you look younger. With the flat top makes you look younger. <clears throat> someone someone said it made me look older the other day. Fuck off. Oh, I got another hat. Because two hats fell down when the cat jumped up there. This is going. Nice. That's appropriate. You should leave that out. Yeah. I mean, Star Wars. Right. This is, I didn't, I haven't really read it, so let's see. Kevin blew it. Blew it. We'll see if he blew it with this question. With the continued he asked lockdowns. One, he asked one last time, didn't he? Yeah. With the continued lockdowns and possibly more in the future, here in the UK, the media have been suggesting that the, that the work in the office may be a thing of the past. Working at home has become mm-hmm. more productive. Would you feel maybe the same could happen in the gym industry, although most gyms have opened up? A lot of people still felt more ease and comfortable training at home and found it more productive and economically. Do you fear that gyms could go the same way? Home gyms and weight sets are still sold at double the price. Could home gyms be the new future? Well, I don't care if commercial gyms go by the wayside because they don't own one, so it doesn't bother me. And I love training at home. I've got equipment at home. I can train at home. And, I, yes, I am more focused at home and get onto it because you go to a gym, you might talk to people. It's a bit of a social thing. I think people like to go there and get looked at, take photos of themselves. So I think you are more focused when you're at home and stuff. But I don't think they're going to go by the wayside, no, because, like I said, too many people like to go there. The people that don't like going to bars and clubs, they like to go to gyms to pick up people and hang out and look at camel toe walking yeah. around and stuff <laughs> like that. Some men like hanging out in the change rooms with their nuts hanging out while they're drying yeah. their balls off. So I feel like that's probably like scare tactic bullshit that they're gonna get rid of like office workers. Mm-hmm. Like I think I, I think some that I think seems some like... they're given. I know in Australia they're given some the option where say a company has a building and they might have fucking ten floors of the building. And they'd have gone, hey, you know what, some of you guys can do this from home. And if you prefer to, we'll give you the option. And some have taken it. So now they might only need to lease seven floors. So they're saving money on, you know, if it works out better for them. Because before everyone thought, oh, I've got to go to work. I've got to go to work. And they'd have saying, hey, you're being just as productive at home. You're getting the job done. Why should we rent this office space if we don't really need it? So Yeah, that makes sense. As, as, long as, they don't lay, yeah. as long as they don't lay people off going, hey, you don't really need them now. We get, yeah. fucking get rid of you. But no, if they can save money on like rental spaces like that, if the people can do it from home. And like I said, some people are maybe more productive at home because they can be at home and maybe they might save money because they won't need childcare because then they can put the little bastard in the other room and just go, shut the fuck up, daddy's at work. And just yeah. keep doing their work and stuff like that. So I don't know, man. Working from home is – I've worked from home – for a little, when we were doing the show it'll be for hard, a while, it'll be hard every, and... every, every 10 minutes at your place would be like a knock at the door. You got any vitamin C in there? <laughs> <laughs> I need some echinacea. <laughs> yeah, what about a multi B plus? Do you have any? Yeah, yours would be fucking annoying selling vitamins from the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just How about like, a s- bottle of water? <laughs> so that, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I could stay home all day. Like working from home yeah, seems well, like it would be a well, bit some much. Can't. Some can't because, you know, you like to have that break home life and work life and separate. Yeah. That's why I get annoyed sometimes when, like I said, people are so obsessed with their phone. Where in the old days, back in my day, you go to work from 8 to 4, 9 to 5, and when you get home, that was it. But now people go home, they've got their phones or computers, and they're still fucking doing emails. They're still doing shit. It's like – Work's work. Home's home. It's like when you, I used to go to school, I hated homework. It's like, look, I go to school for schoolwork. Once school's over, I go home, be a kid, get outside, exercise, play. I don't want to go to school for six, seven hours a day and then come home and do more fucking assignments and schoolwork. This is where kids are either getting fat or they're just losing their mind because they're not getting the exercise and being kids. So it's the same with people. Go to work, do your work. But when you get home, be with your fucking family. Get off your phone. Stop answering emails. Stop check. Oh, I have to do this. No, you don't. That's fucking work. And you and bosses, I know some bosses want them to go above and beyond, but why? You're not getting paid for it. 
So you do your work at fucking work, and when you get home, be with your fucking family. you got to have that fucking balance. You can't go home and be like, okay, honey, I'll be there in a minute. Just got a few more emails to do, and it's fucking 7, 8 p.m. at night. Yeah, I'll come see the kids in a minute. I'm just finishing this quote off. No, it's fucking at home. Save that shit for work. It's got yeah. to, you got to have that fucking balance. And now people are just crossing the line. And I think bosses are starting to expect it from people too. Like, oh, you've got this on your phone now on computer. You can do that at home and fix that. No, you can't. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably a bad thing overall. Like, I guess it's good. You, yeah, you save money. Like, that makes sense. For, like, office workers, that makes sense. But I don't know if if – I think there's something to going to work that's probably that uh-huh. might be important. Well, sometimes to, it gives like, people. A, I think it gives people a purpose too. It's like you know, yeah. you get up, it gives you a routine type thing. Whereas if you're at home, you're like, uh, roll out of bed, keep your fucking pajamas on, stagger around, do whatever. We like go to work. Okay, I got to be up at six. I got to have my breakfast. Get there. It gives you that sort of you know that sort of regimented type thing. You, some people need you know, they need that routine of doing stuff. And it's, I think, too, sometimes they go to work as a little social forum. Like your job, you get to talk to lots of different people. You get to do whatever. Some people, when they go to an office, some people hate people. But then some, you know, it's just that sort of, you know, get to talk to different people in different cubicles and stuff like that. They like that interaction. So, yeah, some I think yeah. for some people, a lot being at home could be more depressing for them and bring them down. And, you know, after six months working at home, they're having a fucking nine mil fucking breath mint. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I last time I went and got gas, I had like a ten minute conversation with the guy in front of me getting gas. Mm-hmm. Um and then I had like a probably a fifteen minute conversation with and I've never seen these people before. Then I had like another fifteen minute conversation when I got in there to the in the gas station with like the guy working there and then like some woman came in and we all were talking about you know but uh but it was we were, like today, it's today when i when i took the wife to the hospital then i just came back and went to the gym quick i went to pick her up i was going back out the car there's an old guy hopping in his car I'm like hello he's like g'day he would have been like 80 beautiful yeah. days and i said yeah then we just got talking for five minutes about the fucking weather and this and that and yeah, so it's just like yeah i like yeah. that's why i always say when people are out they should you know like i said ditch the phone when you're out okay I said I take my phone to take photos every now and then, but you see people just walking on their phone. They've got a dog. They're not talking to the dog. They're doing this. I'm like, yeah. just walk past people, say hello. And people are like, well, some people really don't say hello back. I said, so what? I said, at least you said hello. If they don't say hello back, the next person might. And I used to love going like places. Where if I go out walking, I might walk for an hour, then sit down on a bench or sit near some table, and there be some elderly people you say hello. I said, I love talking to old people because the knowledge they have and some of the stories they tell is great. I just – you know, yeah. just get talk, just get talking to yeah. people. I said, you know, even I said some of these people that are out there too, the elderly. I said some of them, like I said, they could be lonely. I said they just might want someone to say hello to them and chat to them. I said just by you saying hello to them and striking up a conversation could change their whole fucking day and their outlook yeah. and whatever. So I think people, Absolutely. it's like I said before, as technology is going here, humanity seems to be going this way. Technology here, humanity like yeah. this. So it's like. People need to just start interacting more and just saying hello and being friendly and, you know, taking interest in other people and shit. You know, I know when I'm on a plane, sometimes I get talking on a plane. I think of the person beside me sort of thinking, I wish this cunt would shut up so I can I, go to sleep. I think that, too. <laughs> I think that, too. I'm like, am I fucking babbling? Am I annoying this person? Yeah. Because I can't sleep self-awareness. On, I can't, Not that many people I, have that. I, I can't sleep on planes. So I'll be awake the whole time. This person probably thinking, oh, it's a 12-hour flight. I wish the cunt would shut up. And then let me tell you, have I shown you pictures yeah. of my cats? I got some cat photos yeah. I like to show you. <laughs> we have, you have to talk to like a wide – you have to talk to like a bunch – like if you talk to all these random people, if you talk to the same people all the time and you just like do your own thing, you uh-huh. start to like – you just like reiterate all the stuff right. you think about everything and you oh, watch I'm, the fucking news oh, and it's and, – uh-huh. and like when but you even, talk to even their people, like everyone stuff. has their own little like hmm. – Everyone has their own little like thing they know about or way that they do something. And you you talk to people and meet more and more people. And it's like that's how you learn shit from mm-hmm. actual other human beings. Not like it's just people. I think people don't. I mean, obviously, some people are uncomfortable talking to strangers, which I I totally understand. Mm-hmm. But you like be, having as many speaking, friends. Speaking, like, speaking <laughs> of that, I went for lunch with my doctor friend yesterday to this Chinese place near me and. 
we're sitting at the table and these two older women are at a table just across from us. So the table here, table there. And for me to get out, I've got to go in between the two tables. Yeah. So the two ladies are sitting there with a chair beside them and she's got a bag on the chair. And as I walk in between the two tables to go, she grabs a hand on a purse like this. I said, Don't worry, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it. She looks at me. <laughs> she looks at all the tattoos and she goes, and grabs a handbag. I said, Don't worry, I'm not gonna take it. <laughs> oh my god. Fancy judging me like that, Jeff. Yeah, but I know. it's funny because you need to talk to a variety of people because, too, I know if you're stuck in an office place where some people go every day, how are you today, Sam? How are you, Michelle? Good. Uh, this. Then you start to hear the whole, oh, fucking Doug come home last night. He had a few. It's like, oh, fuck, she's going to go on about Doug again. Oh, fuck, someone save us. You know, you get, like, too fucking close to them and then they fucking start telling you their life fucking story. You're like, oh, I don't want to go to work today. We're going to hear about fucking shit again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Let's try and let's try and avoid her in the lunchroom today. We don't want to fucking hear her problems again. Fucking Jesus. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then the yeah. same person you see every day will be like, "This happened and that happened. What should I do?" And you give them advice. They don't take it. Uh, this happened again. What should I do? Well, we told you what to do fucking ten times, and you're still in the same situation. So why stop fucking telling us? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, it is important. I think to do that. It's just. Some of the stuff that you hear people say, like some people end up being wackos and you 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 regret starting the conversation, but some people oh, but, like you know, they're, they're, blow they're your fucking mind now. with stuff. I used to have yeah. some of the best. I used they're to have entertaining. The best they're entertaining. It depends how often you're dealing with them. I used to have some of the best conversations with some of the homeless people because, like I said, some of those homeless people just like you and me lost their job. You know, once they lost their job, they lost their house, got into problems with their missus because started fighting and they got separated, ended up on the street. So but some of the stories they tell, are like they always say to me, oh, we really like you because you actually talk to us like we're people. I said, well, you are people. Yeah. I said, I don't, I don't think down of anyone that's, you know, down on their luck. Sure, some could be out there due to drugs and want to be there, but half the people that I spoke to are out there just because shit went bad. They were here, had their home, had everything, then shit went down south and now they're homeless and you know, some of the stories they tell and shit, some of them are pretty smart people who, given the yeah. right opportunity, could probably somehow get back on their feet. But some, sadly, you know, some people who have been out there for a while give up and they're like, oh, I can't get this, can't get that. But I'm sure if some of them cleaned themselves up, got the right resumes and shit like that, and someone actually gave them a chance, they could be pretty good again and productive. Yeah. Yeah, I know, like, the the, the yeah, the people that have it, like, they're, that are all there and they can talk to you about being homeless is super interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like they have a drug problem and, and they've like the drug problem has basically spiraled them into homelessness mm-hmm. and they're like normal besides a drug problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And they know it. And as like I said, some of them, like I said, are just happy to be that way. But then you get the ones who know they have the problem. And they're trying to better themselves. But it seems like every time they take a step forward, it's two steps back. So, you know, you sort of feel sorry for those people. Yeah, but it, when they're trying to get the help, sometimes. But even like I said, the families have disowned them and just given up on themselves. Like, oh well, fuck, you know. Yeah. We don't want to talk to it. We don't want to talk to our fucking cousin Chris because he's a fucking drug addict and fuck him, you know. Rather than even if he's changed his life, oh you yeah, whatever. So you right, know, people, you know, they get depressed and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's true. People are like, people are so. That's another thing when you quick talk to, ju- to a quick to judge. <laughs> when you when you talk to a lot of different people, you become way more compassionate and way more understanding because you end up you inevitably will end up talking to someone that you prejudge. Then you talk mm-hmm. to them and you're like, oh, fuck, like I was totally wrong about that person. I was totally wrong about that, dude. I was totally lying about that woman. And then it's you end up you over. You learn that you don't really fucking ha- like have any idea what the fuck you're I talking never, about. I never judge a book by its cover because like I said, you can see some of the people where like me, I if I had a dollar for someone – so it's like, oh, Lee, you're nothing like I thought you would be or you're nothing like I expected or you're nothing like yeah. I heard. It's like, oh, my God. It's like, what would you, what did you fucking expect? You know, sometimes people might see me online and go, oh, he's fucking nuts. He's out there or this or that or I heard this about him. And they're like, oh, it's nothing like that. You know, it's like yeah. you can't judge. Like I said, I've seen guys who could be covered in tattoos. You think he's a drug dealer, bikey, whatever. Nicest guy will give you the shirt of his back. And mm-hmm. you see someone in a business who do you think, oh, he's a very smart, intelligent man. He'll be the biggest fucking asshole there is. So yeah. you, know, you can't you can't judge anyone just by looking at him. So right, definitely not, definitely not. Um, Unless it's you, you're a cunt. So you know. yeah, I am. I'm quite the cunt. You might as well get it tattooed on your forehead. 
I am thinking about. I do want to. <laughs> I do want to. I wouldn't say I'm thinking about it, but I do want a tattoo. You haven't got one yet. No, I haven't got one yet. Have you discussed it with the wife? She doesn't care. She, <laughs> she doesn't care. Jerk. What What would you get though? What if you're thinking about one? What is in the? Uh so I want the, a, a love heart on the chest with no, mama. <laughs> no, no, I want. Uh, you know the you know the movie uh, to- the Toy Story movies. Oh, here we, oh, no, here we go. Yes, yes. So I want uh, Woody. I want, you want I want, Woody? I want Woody, but I want Woody to be like realistic looking. I want it to be obvious that it's Woody, but I want it to be realistic, like a realistic Woody. And I want him to be and I want him to be like a, a bodybuilder. Like I want him to be jacked. And I and just like look like. I want him to look like serious, like a serious Woody. Maybe oh, he has like God. his clothes are ripped. Maybe you his know, clothes we, are ripped. You now we, you know, we just talked about talking to people, and sometimes you wish you never asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Fuck off, something that's a good maybe. Tattoo. I was thinking something maybe like a dragon or a fucking this or Fuck tribe that. on this. Now. Fucking no. Woody, and I want Woody to look buffed and fucking real. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, I'll send you a fucking Woody doll and just fucking tape it to your arm, dickhead. Uh-huh. That's, that's, <laughs> What's that? That's fucking Woody on my arm. He's fucking 3D. <laughs> Look at him. You're going to get Buzz on the other one too or what? No, no just Woody. Just Woody. Just Woody. Oh, Jesus. I would explain no, it no wonder, being a bit no, of a prick. No, I don't want to fucking hear anymore. <laughs> no wonder your wife doesn't want to know about it. Tell uh, your wife I'm sorry. I fucking asked myself. <laughs> Even Scott's uh, here going... What the fuck? What the fuck Woody? is he talking about? <laughs> That's, what That's what but people say. That's what people say. But he wants Woody. He wants Woody lifelike and fucking muscles and look fucking. <laughs> not 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 lifelike necessarily, but like uh, maybe like a so, more like serious so, looking cartoon. So someone can look at it and go, "Oh, that's a good, great Woody." Uh, yeah, you have to know that it's Woody because like you don't, want to go, you don't want to go. What's that? What's that meant to be? What's is that, that fucking is Jack that, Cowboy? Is that, it, is that fucking Gumby in a cowboy suit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the 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 it, it had like it would have to look right because it's like it's fucking Woody. It had to look right. But those are like my favorite movies ever. The Toy how Story. How long movie. you how long you been thinking about this for, Jeff? Mm, a long time. Oh. Just just keep thinking about it, mate. <laughs> 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 Think about it a bit longer. <laughs> Maybe you'll grow out of it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully yeah. another fucking cartoon will come along. Yeah. <laughs> do you like no, Toy Story? Do you like Toy Stories? Do you? I love Toy Story. Yeah. I bet you it's fucking cry in them too, don't you? You get emotional and cry. The third one I got emotional, but I didn't cry. No. Was that the last one where they? Uh, the pop- fourth one is the last one, where they really- where they ruined it by forcing fucking yay for women are so powerful bullshit into it. Oh, did they do that, did they? Yeah, oh. they made fucking Bo Peep a Navy SEAL, and she, like, took over the whole movie acting like a fuck, acting like a Rambo. Uh, well, it, was, it, was, it wasn't bad, but the fourth one was the – the fourth one was clearly the worst of the four. But it was still a great movie because it's fucking oh. Pixar and shit, but I think I it was – I watched – um, what was I watching now? They were talking about movie reviews, and they were even talking about that one that was on Netflix now with Jamie Foxx and that pill, you know, the pill you take. Yeah, and you fucking, Power Trip or Power Project yeah, or something. Yeah, and they were saying about that, how it's so pushing the black agenda with the black young girl and you can be anything you want to be. It's like, fuck me dead people. We want to go watch a movie for the movie. I don't want a hidden message about feminism, racism, and this and that. Now the Academy Awards are saying to be nominated for Academy Awards. Did you see that? you got to have so many fucking – ethnicity people in you got to have this type of people you got to have so many women to get nominated for an academy award it's like when i go see a movie i don't give a fuck who's in it if they're all black people i don't care when i was young i had the whole fucking bruce lee movies kung fu movies couldn't understand the word i was saying but i never sat there once jeff going it this movie would be great if it only had a fucking white person in it i can't relate i want a fucking you white person it's like I, I watch movies for the entertainment value, the action, the drama, the fucking horror. I never once thought to myself, I'm not represented in this movie, so I cannot relate. It's like yeah. people, they're fucking movies. Yeah. We don't need to fucking relate to them. It's like, it's just what it is. How yeah. many? There always has, there has to be a white girl with a black guy. Like I've every watched, fucking movie. Uh, I've watched plenty of black movies, like the, even the comedy ones, or there's plenty that, um, oh, what's his name does? He did that movie. Oh, 
with the killer in it, that guy f- from... That narrows it down. <laughs> no, it does, doesn't it? Oh. What's his name? He does, like, love movies. He does action movies. Um, He's a black director guy, but he also stars in them. Oh, fucking hell. You know his name. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, he does a ton of movies, and I enjoy him, but yet it's all black cast. It doesn't bother me. I'm not sitting there going... Yeah, I need some white fucking honky in this movie to make me fucking yeah. appreciate it more. It's like I can watch any movie and I don't care. But why do you I have do... an all black cast? That's my question. Like, are you? Yeah. It's like that annoys me because it's like, why do you have? Like, it doesn't bother me if it was like, but it's like, why? You're obviously doing that on purpose. You're mm-hmm. you're obviously purposely excluding black people. Oh, to me, or, or, like, or white, or white if people. I'm, if I'm it. making like, a movie, that, it just seems know, like why are you? What the? What is the? Look, let's just say I'm a director like fucking Bruckheimer, and I've got an action movie I need. I need okay, a strong action guy for this one. I need the comic type action guy here. I need the dickhead type one here. I'm just going to go through all, all the lists of actors and go. You know what? This is what I envision this guy. Okay, this guy here. Fuck, you know what? Denzel will be great for that part. Okay, this one here, fucking Brolin, he'll be great for that part. I'm not going to give a fuck what people's color or yeah. ethnicity. I'm going to go for the best actor the best that I envision person. that is going to fit this role and pull this role off the best. I'm not going to go, and now the Academy tells me, oh, you need this black actor. Well, okay, I'll get him, but that's not how I envision this character to be, and I don't think he can pull it off as good as – Someone like I want a cranky older person. I need fucking Clint Eastwood to play that part. Okay, Denzel Washington's a bit older now, or Gene Hackman's older, but they couldn't pull it off like fucking Clint Eastwood could, that fucking grumpy old fucking hard ass old man. Oh yeah. no, you gotta have a you gotta get fucking Fred Sanford in to play that grumpy old man because he's black. Well he's not gonna pull it off like fucking dirty Harry can, so I don't yeah. get why we've got to fucking appease all these fucking dickheads now. Just get the best actor and person for the job. That's why when they sometimes say, oh, there's not many black people represented at the Academy Awards this year. Well, maybe because their acting wasn't the best to get Academy Award. It's like it's like bodybuilding sometimes. It's like if you're not good enough in the day, you don't get a fucking award. OK, but there were great movies that had black actors in them. But then there was movies that had white, Hispanic. And if that actor acted better in his role, you believed it more. He had better lines. He, you can't. You know, it's like he gets the award. You can't just go, well, you know what? We need a few black people to get awards yeah. too. So let's just it's like you come just on. Say, you can't just say no black people got awards. Like okay, like well, which black person should have gotten an award that didn't get an award and why? And mm-hmm. if you say that and you make a good case, yeah, you that dude probably should have got. I don't think it's because like all white well, people are KKK what's members like the media yeah. that should be defunded, like well, your shirt says says. Yeah. But like I said, after the Academy after the Academy Award members, I think the Academy Award members who vote on the Academy Awards are actors. You know, I know the um, Golden Globes, that's by the foreign press. And the foreign press is a mixture of all races and fucking countries. But the actual Academy Awards themselves are generally people like Jack Nicholson, Denzel Washington. There's people like your peers and shit who are voting on who they think gave the best fucking performance. That's what it comes down to. It's like, I thought that movie was great and he won the award for it. He's a great actor, that black guy, Michelle. You know that movie Green Book and that? Did you see that one? Really good movie. Um, what's his name? Vigo, whatever his name is, is the driver and he drives him around the country and it's during race times and stuff. Great movie. I think he got Academy Award for that and I thought that was great. So if you do a great performance, you get rewarded. We shouldn't just reward people because, okay, we need a fucking quota now on who gets fucking awards and shit. But now... That's how everything not, is now. Oh, everything has a how, quota. That's what they just said. A if you race look up, quota. Look up now on the Academy Awards, how they're bringing it out now. you got to have... Look, if I put it in here, Academy. Oh, Lee's trying to spell. How did I get the fucking Virgin Airlines? <laughs> Those Academy. sausage fingers. Yeah, it's not even Academy Awards. Um, You're looking up the quotas or whatever the fuck it is? Academy Awards. Yeah, Academy Awards new change. Here we go. Academy Awards new diversity criteria is about effort to make change, not exclusion, Academy Award leaders say. The standard dictates that more people from unrepresented populations are hired for. Hmm. 
Here it is, yeah. Well, it's called New Diversity Criteria. To make an effort to make diversity academy leaders say, the standard dictates for screen. The leaders of the Academy of Motion Pictures and Science are speaking out after receiving some backlash for the new inclusion inclusion diversity standards. Change doesn't come without some variations, says Paramount Pictures, starting with the Academy Awards. Best Picture nominees will have to meet specific requirements addressing gender, sexual orientation, race, authenticity and disability in front of and behind the camera in order to qualify. In addition, films must comply with two or four broad representations from characters. So you've got to have all these characters, standards now, inclusion from sexuality. What the fuck's that noise? This, uh, yeah, so, this. Yeah, these are the new things now. You've got to have, we feel like the filmmakers, so you've got to have like handicapped different things. And, I'm so sorry. I thought that was fine. Must be. In, is there an ad playing? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Nah, nah, let me turn the speaker. I, he- I heard, mate, it's from your end. Yeah, the criteria. Well, these people, like these people, are trying to make life, which is the most unfair thing ever. They're trying to make it somehow fair, like as if you're, you're like trying to coddle everybody into this, like, the, like that, and that the the, the 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 way that they justify it, you know, you can't you can't make change I think, without I making. Think it makes it, I think it makes the, it. Well, here here we go. Here the first. The first is on-screen representation themes and narratives. This is what, to be nominated for Academy Award, eligible films must have to meet one of the following. And it is, one, lead or significant supporting actors from an underrepresented ethnic and racial group. 30% 30% of the ensemble ensemble in the movie are from underrepresented groups, women, POC, LGBTQ, or disabled. Storyline focuses on aforementioned... Are you still working? Yeah. Oh, I don't see. Okay. Aforementioned underrepresented groups. The second representation is two department heads. These are behind, have to be ethnic groups, six key roles outside the department heads from underrepresented groups, 30% of the crew. It's so gross. It's so grossly obvious too. When you watch these fucking movies, it's very hard for me to look past it. And I I fucking hate it to me. That's just making more like, yeah. So you got to be nominated for Academy Awards in the future. They got to have representation from women, the LGBT, this, that, I was like, oh my god! It's like that's a fucking movie. I was like, oh no, fuck me. And that's the thing too. I hate lately too. It's there like, was never a for, problem. I'm all for gay and whatever. I don't care, mate. I said my father's been the same guy for over 35 years, but I don't care. Now I watch Batgirl. She's fucking lesbian. In so many movies now, they're putting in women kissing and men kissing. I was like, I don't care, but. Do we really need it? I don't even want to see couples kissing in a movie, straight people, because I want to watch an action movie. They shouldn't be fucking fucking in action movies or anything like that. I don't yeah. need to see that shit. But now they're really pushing it in there, same sex type stuff in movies. I'm like, you know, it's like if it's in there, it's in there. But I don't mind if it's put in there as part of it. But now you can really tell they're pushing it. And when they're really forcing it, then it makes the movie shit. It's like you're going out of your way to really fucking push this in there, you know? They have Ellen on there banging little girls on Epstein's Island. <laughs> with Oprah. <laughs> yeah, with Oprah. Fucking people. You gotta have you gotta have Oprah and Ellen because we need one of each emphasitic infant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They all have to get that they all have to get that pedophilia yeah. so that they have, have dirt on them. Yeah. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. There's a couple of, I don't know, how long have we been on? We've been on for a for a we've been on for a 12, minute. Oh we have actually, yeah. It's twelve two hours. Fuck, two hours. I guess we should probably wrap it up then. Okay, fuck off. Um, oh, close. Yeah, it's 10 30, It's 12.30 now, yeah. 10.30 here, 10.30 p.m. <clears throat> it's like, if you could change anything, go back, man. Uh, when do you come back to the UK? When we can leave Australia and fly. We can't oh, leave yeah. at the moment, yeah. I look, forget about the fucking COVID shit because everything's normal and nothing's going on. It's easy to forget about when you don't watch the news and you live in mm-hmm. real life. 
<laughs> Any other crazy fan emails besides the muscle jacker and the twins jacking off to your photo? No, not really. Not really. Just the normal troll abuse you get daily, but no, nothing nothing spectacular, no. We got an uh, email actually, with a Sam, photo of two actually, brothers Sam, yanking off. Actually, yeah, Sam did send me one. I should have kept Next time I get one, I'll send it to you, but Sam did send me one that, because, you know, when I go to Sam's Fitness to record videos, Matt that works there, we always joke around about Matt being gay. So this guy did send the thing going, oh, Lee, I really like you on Matt, and he did send the picture of himself naked with a boner. That was only, like, a couple of weeks ago, so... Next oh, time I get one, I'm going to forward it to you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. That's the least I can do. <laughs> so, uh, anyone who's listening, if you have any ideas for the show, like things that you want us to do that are different, like we're kind of thinking of ideas so that not, we're not just now doing listener questions the whole time because it's kind of like been done. We'll still do them for sure because they, they create like good conversation. But if you have any ideas of like, we need to get stuff you want to like see. random where we can just call someone randomly and add them in. But that, but you get people on here that's it's like I don't know, man. You only get you only get a couple of minutes each, but you know, sure you're going to get some fucking loons, but you know, hey, they're fun. You better come on here and be like, uh, uh, Lee, I was wondering if you, uh, how big your arms are. It's I don't know. That's a, that shit always seems cringy to me. We could do that if people want to see that though, for sure. Sometimes yeah, it's I, cool. Yeah, Sometimes you know, it's cool. Scott can vent them first. <laughs> yeah, Scott. Yeah, Scott has to interview him first and, and uh, yeah. test them out. <laughs> yeah. Are you the, worthy? The, the screening, the screening yeah, process. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I've thought you about got to some... go through different levels to get on live. Yeah. <laughs> I've thought about having guests on, which we might do. Like we could have Romano on; it'd be sick. We could have like maybe get Paul Delette. Yeah, Paul would be good. I've actually been speaking to Paul a bit lately. He'd be good to get on. We should get people Paul that on. like we could have guests. I'm coming up with an idea right now. We should have guests that other people don't have on. Dave like, Columbo. Like, let's, let's get let's get Dave on. Dave would never come on. Yeah, he would. He'd do it for me. You think so? Yeah, I'll ask him. Why not? Yeah, that'd be cool if he would. Delet would probably do it. I could get Delet on. Delet would be a, a, a Delet would be very very cool. I would love that. Stories we can talk about when we live together. That would be a yeah. funny story. Yeah. I'll send him a message this week and I'll ask him if he's got time sometime to come on. Yeah, do that. Do that for sure. That'd Samir, be awesome. Samir, Banu- Samir would come on. I'm really good with Samir. Yeah. Line 11 on. Fuck yeah. Samir, Samir's got plenty of funny stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like right now in the bodybuilding like podcast game, a lot of like the current pros are being interviewed. And I think maybe we could have guys on that are like I'm just spitballing, but like mm-hmm. have guys on that are that are like like Romano, like he's on RX once in a while, but no one really has Romano on. Like mm-hmm. guys like that, Paul Delet, no one has Paul Delet on. Like guys, you know, guys like that. Samir, think, yep. Samir, yeah, for sure. It's like we'll uh, get five, we'll get five jacket Mike on. Mike, you're blonde. M- Mike Yablin. Yeah, five jacket Mike. You can tell when he lived with me for all the stories when we lived oh, together. Oh man, that would be. He cool. worked at. He's got lots of stories too because he worked at Gold's Gym and that when I first met him and stuff. Oh yeah, he's a. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool too. Yeah, yeah. We think about it. Well, if you guys have okay. any ideas like something like that or like some sort of like, you know, I thought about having like a movie segment, then like a bodybuilding segment. I don't know. Like I don't know. I kind of like just a, like the natural a political folk. and religious segment to really yeah. fire them up. Yeah, <laughs> you were you really tested the waters there with the uh, with the uh, the racial stuff. You must have you forget what happens. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't say nothing bad. I'm just I'm no, just I'm talking reporting. about me going off the rails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about that. Fuck that. But I'm talking about we did one show where we decided to talk about like the BML bullshit. Oh, and, the, the uh, show the show that didn't get made it to air. <laughs> dude, we I fucking Jeff Jeff lost his shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was way too ready to go. I don't, in think, I, don't, I don't think you came up for air for two hours. You just started going. On. Oh, I Scott lost was 10 like, pounds. Scott was like, "What the right? Four he hours was. later. Four he hours later. Was. Four hours later. Scott's still like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Scott's like this back there. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> I back every single thing I said, and I, I, you know, it is what and it is. Did, and all I did was ask one question about BLM, and then fucking boom, <laughs> it was off. 
Yeah, it's true. I don't know if he might got to go to the bank. I didn't think it was coming it's soon. Okay. But uh, I, can, I can put it through to his account or. But all right, we're going to wrap it up. Like, share, subscribe. Let us know if you have any ideas. Um, I'll, well, be, I'll, be, I'll be coming out time. in a second. <laughs> I'm yeah. just yelling out to someone in the house. Don't be, worry about me. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> He'll be out in a second, wrapping up. Just finally wrapping up. Fuck yeah, hurry up, will you? He's finally, <laughs> finally shutting up. Christ. Uh, yeah, like Look at me. Subscribe. Look at me. I'm turning the lights off. I'm turning the lights off. <laughs> 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 it's like when you're at the restaurant, they come turn, start yeah. turning the lights off. Yeah. Like we're Music we're stop. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Are you still here? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, that's that. With that, uh, for Lee Priest, I'm Jeff Roberts, and we're out of here. Goodbye.